Welcome to Time of Death. This video is for informational purposes and in no way meant to glorify or condone violence. In today's video, we'll be discussing the murder of Elvia Carlota Romero. Romero was shot and killed on Tuesday, November 12, 2002, in the 100 block of Grand Oaks Avenue in Pasadena, according to LA County Coroner Records. Norman Lewis Condiv and Robert Fielder were subsequently arrested and charged with the murder. The following is the evidence at trial. The count one murder of the victim, the 82 year old grandmother of Jessica and the count two attempted murder of David, her son and Jessica's uncle were committed in furtherance of defendant's goal of dissuading Jessica, a witness from testifying against defendant who had been arrested for selling marijuana to Jessica. On August 31st, 2002, at around 7.29 p.m., while on vehicle patrol, uniformed Pasadena police officers David Alva and Javier Aguilar observed defendant and Jessica in the driveway of 270 Park Street in Pasadena. Defendant handed Jessica three baggies containing a green leafy substance, two of which tested positive for 5.64 grams of marijuana. Jessica was arrested before she could pay him. Defendant fled on foot but was pursued and later arrested. Officer Chris Sharma found on defendant a pager and about $196 cash in small bills, possession of which was consistent with the sale of small amounts of marijuana. Later that night, defendant told Juan Acosta he had been bailed out of jail and that Jessica had snitched on him. Defendant also related that he had to kill Jessica because the marijuana charge would be his third strike and he was fearful of what would happen. On the evening of November 12, 2002, Defendant and Tyrone Baker, defendant's fellow gang member, knocked on the door of Jessica's apartment, asked if Jessica was home, and identified themselves as Jessica's friends in order to conceal their true motive to kill Jessica. When her uncle said she was not home, they announced their intent to return and left. Defendant needed to get to Jessica that night because his preliminary hearing was the next day. He decided to modify his rules to lure Jessica into the open by staying behind in the car while co-defendant Fielder, Jessica's friend, went with Baker to her apartment. He formed a backup plan to kill Jessica's relatives if Jessica was not there. To effectuate his plan, defendant instructed Baker to make sure Fielder had a gun. The uncle was sitting outside in the patio area cooling off and relaxing and the door was partially open when two men wearing hooded sweatshirts returned within the hour, around 8 p.m. They walked up to about six feet away from where he was sitting and one asked, where's Jessica? The uncle responded, nah, Jessica's not here, Jessica's not here. The two men then removed handguns from their waistband and one of them shot the uncle in the left shoulder area. Meanwhile, the grandmother was telling her other son over the phone about the earlier visit when she announced, here they come again, and left the phone without hanging up. Within seconds, the other son heard her speaking loudly and then what sounded like shots. The uncle saw the grandmother run outside the two men grabbed and dragged the grandmother by her hands over to the carport area where she was shot multiple times. The grandmother later died at the hospital from a fatal wound to her lower torso from one of the two bullets that struck her. Co-defendant Fielder, who pled guilty to second degree murder, admitted at trial that he was the one who shot the grandmother. He identified Baker, who died before trial, as the one who shot the uncle. Fielder gave this version of the circumstances surrounding the incident. In the summer of 2002, he and Acosta, his friend and neighbor, resided at 270 Park Street, a multi-unit apartment complex in Pasadena. Both were selling marijuana and crack cocaine for a defendant, who invoked the Bounty Hunter blood gang. On August 31st, 2002, defendant told Fielder that he had been arrested for selling Jessica drugs and indicated it was Fielder's fault for not being around when she showed up. He wanted Fielder to talk to Jessica because he was looking at three strikes, 25 years to life in prison, and didn't want Jessica to testify. Fielder asked defendant something to the effect, what do you mean what I gotta do? Defendant told him, I mean, you gotta go talk to Jessica, do something to scare her or something. Yanking Fielder out of the car, Baker handed him a gun and the two proceeded almost side by side to Jessica's apartment. Fielder had his gun in his pocket. He couldn't see where Baker had his gun. Fielder thought he was just supposed to talk to Jessica until he was handed a gun and everything. Detective Kyle Ballard, a gang expert, testified that the Pasadena Denver Lanes was an entrenched blood gang who claimed the majority of the northwest portion of Pasadena as their territory and that it was a criminal street gang. Their criminal activities included murder, witness intimidation, and drug trafficking. The Pasadena Denver Lane gang would form alliances with blood gang members from outside the city. Ballard opined Fielder, who admitted membership, was an active member of that gang. 
Victor Ross, a gang expert with the LAPD, had previously testified as an expert on the bounty hunter bloods. Ross testified that the territories in the southeast area, but primarily the Nickerson Gardens, a housing project consisting of over 1,100 units. In 1990 or 1991, defendant admitted to Ross that he was a bounty hunter gang member and that his particular clique was the Lot Boys. Following the trial, defendant Norman Lewis Condiv was convicted of first-degree murder, attempted murder, conspiracy to commit murder, dissuading a witness by force or threat, and conspiracy to dissuade a witness by force or threat. Condiv was sentenced to prison on count one to life without the possibility of parole, which was tripled under the three strikes law, plus 25 years for the firearm enhancement, and on count two, 25 years to life, plus 25 years to life for the firearm enhancement. Elvia Carlota Romero was 82 years old at the time of death. 